Creality has just released an updated version of my favorite printer from 2023. This is the original K1, and this is the K1C. It's not an entirely new 3D printer, but it does have a lot of small but important updates that does make it a vastly better printer. Let's get into it. And they did actually put a label on it. That's how you can tell it's the K1C. So what does that C really stand for here? They say it stands for carbon because this is optimized for using carbon fiber filaments. They updated the extruder so it's an all metal extruder in there so that won't get worn down by that really abrasive filament with carbon fiber built in. They've also really changed their nozzle here. This is a proprietary, what they're calling a unicorn tri-metal nozzle. It's got copper in there for good thermal conductivity, a steel tip on there for good wear resistance, and it's got the titanium heat break built into the entire thing. It's a simple one-hand removal, very similar to the Revo nozzles where it's an entirely integrated piece. Hopefully the wear resistance on here should last for a lot longer and you really shouldn't need to buy these nozzles because they will be more expensive than some cheap standard brass nozzles. But standard brass nozzles do wear out a lot quicker. I did some initial testing of carbon fiber printing and these turned out beautifully. Better than any other matte filaments I've used, these just turned out incredible. This Benchy I think is one of my favorite Benchies I've printed. That surface finish on there, it's both shiny and matte at the same time. It's just a really cool thing to look at. I also made some hooks for multi-board. These are really strong. I can't get them to break, but they are really, they are small and sturdy and I can't get them to break in my hand. So that's a solid win here. The first print that I sliced with their slicer for this carbon fiber PLA did have some under extrusion issues. I used their default profile, which is 23 cubic millimeters per second squared flow rate. And then I bumped it down to 18 millimeter, cubic millimeters per second squared, which is similar to what they have for generic PLA. And that's what I sliced the, all these other prints on. And these turned out beautifully. This one just had some issues when trying to push it up really fast flow rates. And I'm not sure exactly what the issue is. It could be with this Bowden tube bending, too much friction in the tube, or it could just be that filament was struggling a little bit and 18 is kind of the flow, flow rate limits there and 23 is a little bit optimistic. So if you are having some issues with under extrusion, check those flow rates that might be a little too optimistic of them and 18 worked beautifully. But the real test here will be six months down the line after spools and spools of carbon fiber filament have passed through it to see how well these parts hold up against this, to see if it really is good for carbon fiber printing. So far it's working great, but only a few weeks of testing really doesn't show that long-term six months, 10 kilograms later of carbon fiber printing. So I will have to keep an eye on that to see how things hold up. Next up, I do think we need to talk about the improvements and slight differences between these two printers. I have an entire review video on this one and a lot of things are the same between there, but let's cover some of the important key updates that this one has fixed. I think the most important update here is that they fixed the gearing and motors to reduce vertical fine artifacts. That was my biggest issue with the K1 and K1 Max. So a brief top view of what vertical fine artifacts are, these printers use stepper motors, and those stepper motors take 1.8 degree steps. There's all these micro stepping and other things to it, but basically they take steps. And on the K1 and K1 Max, the motors are attached to really large gears. So each motor step is moving the pulleys a lot to move the print head a lot. So you get these really large ringing issues here. It's not ringing or ghosting and no amount of input shaping can fix it. It's just a motor and pulley issue on these printers. On the new K1C, they've updated these gears so they're much smaller, about half the size. So each step internally of that motor will move the pulleys a lot less. There's a lot of complexities of Core XY, but each step will move the print head less. I also noticed they did change the motors inside here. They are 10 millimeters shorter. I guess they just didn't need the power output of these larger stepper motors in there. And they were able to use these cheaper ones that are more standard on most printers use this size of print motor. That long explanation aside, basically vertical fine artifacts are reduced to gone on the K1C versus the K1 still suffers from a lot of these vertical lines. That right there was my biggest issue with the original K1 and now it's fixed on the K1C. The rest of the updates, these are gonna be more minor. <laughs> The back of the bed has a rubber brush on there to help clean off the nozzle. This helps for bed leveling since it does use the nozzle as the actual probe to probe the bed. And I don't know if they've changed anything else, but the bed leveling on the K1C does seem improved over the original K1. I did a bed level test between them, loading the same file, slicing it the same way, sending it to both these printers. And the K1C looks beautiful. The K1 
does have some slight inconsistencies in these layers. The K1C comes pre-installed with a camera in there. With the K1, it's an optional upgrade. The K1C comes with a built-in air filter on the back, but this air filter does fit on the K1 and they even give you the print file here. So you can just print out this file and add in your own carbon, activated carbon filters there and install this on there, which is what I'm gonna do. It's not an amazing filter, but it's gonna help a little bit. The side mounted spool holder is really nice on here. It is a file you print out yourself and then change the, some of the screws. It comes with two different models you can print and mount the spool on the side. It also is really easy to change where you have it mounted. If you have it mounted on the side sometimes, but if you wanna move it to the back, it's really easy to swap back and forth between side mounting and back mounting. These feet come glued in place so they're not gonna pop off on you. On the original K1, it was really easy to accidentally lose one and then your printer's gonna be wobbling around on here. So another simple fix that you could glue the feet onto the original K1, but I just never got around to that. The front door here is improved. The hinge is dampened here, so it's not gonna just swing open all of a sudden. It could swing open and hit something, be very easy to break. It is still glass, so it is still breakable. I've broken my K1 Max's door by, if you overextend it, if it's open and you accidentally bump it backwards, it will shatter on you. But this new one is updated with a protective film on the inside, which should reduce the amount of shattering and sending glass particles everywhere. This one is really easy to accidentally just bump and it slings all the way open and would be really easy to break off. They've also improved the left side gasket here. There is a rubber flap which reduces the amount of air that can escape from the hot chamber inside. Another minor update, they changed how the cable chain is run to the hot end. It's a bit taller which should reduce some of the angle on the Bowden tube going from the cable chain into the hot end and because of that they gave you this rubber gasket to put on the top hat here so it shouldn't be rubbing against and wearing out this top plastic cover. I usually don't use the plastic cover because I mostly print PLA anyways. So that covers most of the differences between these two printers but a lot of things are still the same. The chassis is still the same size, the print volume is the same size, the print speeds are still going to be the same speeds. They're both using the same software and firmware. It's an open source clipper build here so you can get in there run fluid on your computer and totally adjust and change things as you want. You can install third-party mods to Clipper if you wanted a time-lapse mod, if you wanted whatever you wanted to change on here, it's totally open source and you get to do that yourself. Another big usability similarity here is that the screen and screen interface is the same between the K1C, the K1, and the K1 Max. So if you have any of these and you learn how to use the interface, you know where the buttons are, it makes it really easy to use and I really like these screens. They're large, capacitive, bright, colorful, very easy to use. It's also really convenient that they do use the same slicer, and the Creality slicer is, I think, one of the best ones for managing multiple printers. If you have more than one Creality printer, it's just really easy to interface between all of them at the same time. On the first tab of the slicer, you select which printer you want to use, then you put your model on there, select which profile you want to use, slice it, and then select which printers you want to send it to. So if you had a bunch of the same printers, you could slice one file and send it to a bunch of the same printers at the same time. It also makes it really easy to monitor all of your printers at the same time. Each printer has its own clipper-like interface there, which makes it really easy to use and really powerful if you want to adjust or change things while the print is happening. So in the end, the K1C really is a pretty solid upgrade to the original K1. I think they've taken all of the things that they've learned in the first six months of this new platform and really put them into this new printer. This one is a lot better and I think really replaces what the original K1 was. In the end, which of these would I recommend? Easily the K1C. The bed leveling I think is better. They've reduced the vertical fine artifacts. And those are my two biggest complaints with the original K1. They both work, but those vertical fine artifacts were kind of annoying in close-ups of prints, and now it's fixed. Price-wise, how much would I recommend it more? I would say if it's within $50, get the K1C. If you could find the original K1 on clearance or a great discount where it's closer to $100 or $150 difference, the K1 is still a great printer and I would probably still recommend that. You could buy a camera, you can update the nozzle, you can, you can fix and change a lot of the things on here, but the updated extruder, vertical fine artifacts, bed leveling being better, those are solid upgrades here. And if you are looking to pick up either of these printers, I will have some coupons and affiliate links in the description down below. Those do really help the channel out. If you're thinking about buying any printers right now, those links, they help me at no additional cost to you. 
If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. I feel like I might have skipped some things because a lot of things for this review was covered in the original K1 review. That was more of a deep dive review. This is more of a surface level of the changes between these printers. Well, I hope that helps you out. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.